So the title of the message is Evolution is a Lie. Evolution, the lie. Amen. And uh, <laughs> there's actually a series on this. I don't think I'm going to beat it to death for four weeks, but I, I, this one really touched me, and I, I really wanted to share it because it, it's a shame that we as Christians have taken so many things in stride. There's Christians that believe in the gap theory. God kind of just let these little things evolve. Christian evolutionist. <laughs> Satan has infiltrated. Yeah, Satan has infiltrated the body of Christ. You see what I'm saying? Amen. So we're going to read in Romans chapter one. We're going to read, and and um, that could just be the sermon. I mean, I could stop right there if y'all just dwelled on. I'm not going to, so don't get your hopes up. But. <laughs> <laughs> Romans chapter 1, we're going to read 17 through 25. I've got the Good News Bible today. And it says, and read along and let it, let it kind of sink in. It says, the gospel reveals how God puts people right with himself. It is through faith from the beginning to end. As the scripture says, the person who is put right with God through faith shall live. God's anger is revealed from heaven against all the sin and evil of the people whose evil ways prevent the truth from being known. But we, we could stop and just talk and discuss that for 30 minutes by itself. God's anger is revealed from heaven against all the sin and evil of the people whose evil ways prevent the truth from being known. That's going on right now. God punishes them because what can be known about God is plain for them. For God himself made it plain. Ever since God created the world, his invisible qualities, both his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly seen. They are perceived in the things that God has made. When you walk out the door, when you look around, it's screaming out, there's a God. Amen. Tonight, when you look up in the sky, it's screaming out, there is a God. Amen. So those people have no excuse at all, exclamation point. Amen. If you say there's no God, you don't have an excuse because everything around you screaming, there is a God. <laughs> there, they know God. They know God, but they do not give him the honor that belongs to him, nor do they thank him. They know God. The people that say they don't know God know God. Everybody's been to war and knows and been near a foxhole knows that that atheist became a God-fearing person. Instead, their thoughts have become complete nonsense, and their empty minds are filled with darkness. Sounds like our country today. They say they are wise, but they are fools. Instead of worshiping in the immortal God, they worship images made to look like mortals or birds or animals or reptiles. And so God, here it goes. Here's the key of what happened and is happening. And so God has given those people over to do the filthy things their hearts desire, and they do shameful things with each other. They exchange the truth about God for a lie. Today we're going to talk about evolution. Okay. They worship and serve what God has created instead of the Creator Himself, <laughs> who is to be praised forever. Amen. Amen. Woo! Evolution is a lie, and there's an attack on Christianity that's been going on. You know, years ago, years ago, our society was based on the Christian absolutes. People knew what was right, and they knew what was wrong. Now, what I mean, they just knew. Everybody on the street knew. <laughs> Why? Because it was just immoral. You see what I'm saying? Behaviors such as sexual perversions that's going on around us, easy divorce. You can drive by and get it for $29.99 on Highway 31 on the way to Tyler. Y'all see that big sign up there, divorce room? Public lawlessness. Look what happened in Indianapolis yesterday. A bunch of people died again. Got shot. Abortion on demand. Pornography, public nudity, decadence down, it's, it's everywhere. I, I want to talk about it down on the coast, but it's everywhere, decadence. These were all considered to be wrong. Why? Because they were just wrong, you know. But see, back then, the punishments 
for defenders came from society. It was just a done deal. Because everyone either believed in God or they respected those that believed in God. Even those that were, were, were uh, uh, agnostic at the best or atheist did not dare do what they do today openly. They didn't do it. They made sure it was just the two of them together that talked the way they did. You see what I'm saying? See, today more and more people have rejected the God of the Bible, the true God, the one and only living God. And as belief for God has been abandoned by our country, we'll just stick to our country. The whole world's this way. But our country's jumping right on board with the rest of the world. People have questioned the basis in society of what's right and wrong. And I had a discussion with a young lady. This, she's in her 40s. Saying, well, I know abortion's wrong for me, but I don't know if it's wrong for everybody. It's wrong for everybody. <laughs> the Word of God applies to all. See, God ain't a racist. <laughs> he, he's not a feminist. He, it's for everybody. Whew. But once people eliminate God from their conscience, then anything's okay. That's a lie from the devil. This is a lie. And it's fed as a fact. Probably the only child in here that hasn't been taught it as a fact is not in school yet or is homeschooled. So my kids, I mean, what's he, 41? Hey, I mean, my kids come home tore up because their teacher's telling them that this is fact, that it's a scientifically proven fact that evolution happened. You see, Christian absolutes, they've been diluted and removed so much by society, and it's been replaced with this. It says, we do not have to accept the Christian way of doing things as the only way of doing things anymore. We must tolerate all religious beliefs and ways of life. And that's what's taught, tolerance. But what it really means is intolerance for the absolute truth of Christianity. There's a third grader, I forget what state she's in, there's a third grader that had to take her I love Jesus, no, Jesus loves me, face mask off. Hello, intolerance for the absolute truth of Christianity, while others wore gay pride. You see the difference. See, eventually this is going to result in the outlawing Christianity. We were talking about it before Bible study. We were talking about the Canadian pastor. He finally got out of jail. For having, for having church when his government told him he couldn't have church. There's still a pastor in jail because he openly, his hate speech was against the homosexual agenda. Hello. Yeah. Our society is now based on relative morality. So whatever you feel, it's okay. And that comes from evolution. Because if evolution's true, then there's no supreme being. There's no standard of ethics. There's no morals. You can do whatever. So what happened in Indianapolis is perfectly fine. <laughs> Y'all seeing this, right? Most people have the wrong idea about creation and evolution. The question. Instead of perceiving the real issue, they've been deceived into believing that evolution is science. But if you'll just look it up, science means that you took... Uh, some known parameters, and you, 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 you check it out, and you reprove what somebody said is, is a fact. Now, we can't do that. We, we can't get no half-man, half-ape thing walking around. Boy, you know, they would love to try to do it, but they just can't do it. <laughs> it's important to understand that creation and evolution are both religions. They're religions. Now, evolutionists don't want to believe that. Because then they still have to believe that, there's, that they're having faith in something. But then you do. <laughs> Somebody yelled out while I was saying, was it Perry? He said, I don't have enough faith to believe in evolution or be an atheist. Something. I mean, it takes more blind faith to believe in, in, in a one single cell turning into something like me. Huh? Than God speaking it into existence. Woo. You know, Christian... Christian or uh, creation, intelligent design. It's a belief system. And the difference is that creationists base theirs on the word that comes from the one and only God that was there when it happened. <laughs> and evolution is based on mortal man who wasn't there and admits they weren't there, but this is what they think happened. 
Hello. When we discuss creation and evolution, in both instances, we're talking about beliefs, or that is religion. And the controversy is not religion versus science. It's religion versus religion. Okay? Evolution is a religious position that makes human opinion supreme. And y'all know, and we're, there's living proof around you everywhere you look at what the results, what the fruit is. The fruits is lawlessness, immorality, impurity, abortion, racism, and, of course, mocking of our one and true God. Creation is also a religious position based on the Word of God and its fruits. Of course, our love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and the hardest one, self-control. The creation evolution issue is the heart of problems in society today because it's everywhere. Is there, I've seen one bumper sticker where this, there's a bunch of little fish, uh, the Ishta sign, the fish, the Christian fish, and then there's a big one that's got legs eating. The, obviously, an evolutionist trying to eat up Christianity. It's on his back of his, of his car. You've got to look at the root of the problem, and it all comes back to the same thing, sin. The root of the problem. Evolutionists don't want to admit that evolution is really a religion because then that means you're still saying there's something in control. They'd rather just believe that by random chance we became what we are, so whatever we want to do is okay. That's what's wrong with this world because what happened in Indianapolis for a 19-year-old to go and shoot eight people? Well, he killed eight. He, he shot more than that. But, but to go and do that, there, there's, no, there's not an ounce of the Holy Spirit left in this individual. He's been given over, like we read in Romans, to a degenerative mind. See, that's the punishment. Some of y'all, you're getting all hung up about what's going on in our country in the flesh and saying, man, these people, they're already being punished. Yeah, I know they're making some, they're trying to put some things into place to kill more babies faster and trying to take over this country to, to where we'll never be able to uh, be a God-fearing country. But you've got to realize that's their punishment. They're living it right now. They're destined for hell. So we've got to be praying for revival, man. Evolution is a religion which enables people to justify writing their own rules. The real battle, it's aligned with the fact that these people don't want to accept Christianity because they will have to come to, they'll have to face the fact that there's a God and they've got to come to face with their sins. See, I guess the reason this one kind of touched me on evolution is because it's like, well, what? I, I bet, by a show of hands, there's a lot of folks in here that have had this discussion come up while you was eating with a, maybe a believer or a non-believer. How many of y'all have had this evolution come up as, as a discussion? Anybody? Yeah, amen. Was your answer, your answer in a meek, mild, loving situation that drew that individual in closer to God because see that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be ready to we're supposed to be ready to answer any question why we believe what we believe why do you believe in pro-life why do you believe in marriage why why are you against this why and you should be able to answer and the word of God tells us in first Peter three fifteen. but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear if so for no other reason today when you leave you you g just getting just a morsel out of the, these these few minutes that you're spending here to have an answer for somebody that i'm praying god's going to put on your heart that they don't have to be some outspoken evolutionist but you know that that's where they lie because they don't believe in god you see that's really the only two things that you can believe in you know when somebody says they're an atheist they still believe we got here somehow and they lean towards evolution you see what i'm saying that's why it's such a big lie. We must be prepared to make an intelligent response to those individuals. See, when Jesus was asked a question concerning divorce, because I, I said one of the things we should, we should be able to explain why we believe in marriage the way it is. One man, one woman, <laughs> right? Stay together forever kind of thing. Y'all, you can go like this if you don't want to talk today. There we go. Amen. <laughs> Matthew 19, Jesus answered this when they asked him, because so, they, they were asking him about divorce. And he says, and he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning 
made them male and female. Okay? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. And what Jesus was doing was taking part of Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, and he wrapped it up into a verse, a couple verses here, and said, This is the foundation of marriage. You see? That's what he was saying. He was saying, don't you understand that this is the historical basis for there to be a marriage? Y'all realize the only reason for a marriage is a moral one that comes from Scripture. There's no other reason for marriage. That's powerful. And so it's something to dwell on. Maybe make notes to yourself and be able to explain to somebody. Because God instituted the marriage. He implemented the marriage. It didn't come about another way. You know, so Adam and Steve would be okay if God hadn't if instituted the marriage. One male and one female. It's that simple. And the rest of the teaching, this is going to hurt some guys. But the majority for marriage. But, but, but the majority of Christian families, it's the woman teaching the spiritual things in the house. I pray that's not with this church. But for the majority of Christians, it's the mama teaching the spiritual things in the household, which means the, 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 the man has not embraced the God-given responsibilities of being the spiritual leader of the house. There was this young woman that went to the pastor. She'd been married a few years. They had a child, and they weren't agreeing on how to raise the child. And the pastor said, I've never met your husband. She goes, well, he's a non-believer. And the pastor said, well, how did that happen? And she goes, well, he's just like my dad. And the pastor looked back and said, well, your, your dad comes to our church. <laughs> and she went on to say, well, they hit it off. They both have the exact same types of, of interest. They do this and do that. And he's like, whoa, I won't repeat what she said. But there was things that they did. And. And he was like, he never had a clue because the man was at church every Sunday. But he wasn't a spiritual leader, you see. And she based her, dis her decision to get married on the fact that this fiancé or this boyfriend was a lot like her dad. And now they're raising a child and they're in a disagreement on what they should be taught. You see that? I'm li I have lived that where a husband and a wife, the wife was the non-believer, if you will. She thought she was a believer. There's a lot of people that think they're believers. Amen? They sit right here. And they didn't come back after the discussion on the homosexual agenda. When she made the comment, she said, they had two daughters. She said, I would be honored if one of my children turned out to be a lesbian. And her husband almost fell out of his chair. That tells you they're unequally yoked. So, boys and girls, you ain't married yet. Make sure you talk about everything and make sure you're with a believer before you get married. Amen. There's no options. There's no gray area. You either are or you ain't. You know, my son, he, he I think I can share this. Yeah, because he's the one that said it. My son, I wish all Democrats had a sign or something so I'd know whether to ask him out or not. <laughs> yeah. Now, my son said that. I'll tell you how I feel after church. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> I can start using him a lot and get by with that. It ain't, it, it, it's, it's not Canada yet. But you can find me in prison for that in Canada. You know what I'm saying? If you, <laughs> but if you don't adopt God's given rules to set, that are set out in Scripture for you and me, if, they're, if you don't do that, you will find your family dissolved. I mean, if they stick together, they're still miserable. If you're not going with the Lord, things are falling apart, man, even if it looks good, even if you're in a $500,000 home. I got a question. Why is everybody in here wearing clothes? Well, I know you looked at me like, Mo, there's some ugly, ain't there? Some... We'll do what? What'd you say? It's cold out. I hope my mic didn't pick that up. I'll have to get that taken out. But just consider why we wear clothes. It's a moral issue. You see that? 
Next time an atheist talk to you, ask an atheist why he's wearing his clothes. I mean, really. I mean, it sounds so stupid, but that's the facts. Adam and Eve were naked. There was no sin yet. They ate, everything was just fine. You see? And, and uh, it, then sin entered into the world, and immediately they knew they were naked, which meant they were thinking things they didn't think before. Now, they, they'd already had children, folks, okay? But it wasn't bad. It was all good. They didn't think things they shouldn't think. Sin distorts nakedness. So you can't now be naked and there not be something immoral going on up here. Period. Just the way it is. So if there's a moral reason for not, if there's a moral reason for making sure you are wearing clothes, it must have a basis somewhere. And that's why I say, you ask an evolution, they'll be saying, well, it's just only appropriate. Appropriate based on who? I, I mean, that's just how you feel. They don't want to say morals because morals means there's a supreme being. There's a standard. And the standard came from where? You can't have a standard that just makes itself up as you're coming out of this one single cell thing into. Hello. It all came from Scripture. There's a moral basis if you go back to Scripture. Adam and Eve. In, in fact, the first blood sacrifice was to cover up that sin. The first innocent animal was killed by God himself. The blood was shed, and then the skin was placed over them to hide their nakedness because now sin had entered the world. You see, religion or faith, if it really was evolution than being naked in public wouldn't matter and you could go on and on just like i said about the guy in indianapolis that 19 year old that's there's not an ounce of the holy spirit left in you if you kill somebody regardless i mean there's something wrong now back on the the naked thing you know men are aroused really easy <laughs> the women are going women are going yeah they are <laughs> yeah i've told people before Okay, you know, I might be a pastor, but I ain't no gelding, you know. So when a lady shows up and she's dressed like the milk lady, I go to the women and say, why don't you talk to her? <laughs> and some of y'all know who I'm talking about. She ain't been around for a long time. There ain't no reason to show that stuff off because guys are going to look. So the spiritual thing for the, the leader of the family, which is supposed to be the father, is to talk to his daughter and let her know. She shouldn't dress that way. It's not just mama. It's the spiritual leader. The mama helps. And definitely talk to the guys and say, hey, just because somebody's wearing these clothes or a lack of clothes, you, it's natural, but it's, no, you must bind that up. You teach that kid to bind that up. Amen. Job put it in perfect words. 31.1. I made an agreement with my eyes not to look at a young woman in a way that would make me want her. And that's how we should do. Amen. I put in my, was that today's blog? No, it was in uh, the devotional U version, talking about God knows what we're thinking. Jesus knows what we're thinking. And that's the most humiliating thing is because I can act right, I can do right, but there's a whole lot of times I ain't thinking right. And I'm your pastor. I'm just being honest, amen? And I'm, hum I'm, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm, 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 I'm it's a sobering thing, man, to think, man, Jesus just, he just, he, he knows what I just thought when I was looking, you know. It's, it's hard to deal with that. But you need to make a covenant with your eyes and ask God to help you. Amen. As Christians, males should make a covenant with their eyes. Evolutionists, well, if it feels good, do it. That's how it is. That's why it's, it's like the lie that Satan, you know that the public school system teaches it as, as a fact. Hey, I'd have to talk to you all that's got these children here and find out just exactly what age and what they're being taught. But my kids, 20, uh, oh, shoot, <laughs> 35 years ago, were being taught. Yeah, Rylan, my little grandson, sixth grade, being taught. But these consequences of sin, this is where we wrap this up. There's always consequences when you reject God, right? And First Romans talked about that. Amen. 
There, when, when you reject God, it said in, in, in Romans chapter 1, if you follow along, he gives you over to the things that you want to do. You're, you're, he lets you do those lustful things, those desires that's in your heart, right? Doing, and you end up being over to a degenerate brain that has no conscience. And this is going to hit, this, this, is, this is like a whole other uh, sermon in itself. People have asked me this. How many of y'all have ever been asked, well, what about all those people that's never heard about Jesus in these other third world countries? How many of y'all have been hurt? Hey, nobody's been, yeah, amen, amen, yeah. A and it makes you think, don't it? We got the answer today. If you didn't get in, okay, check this out. Okay, there's, you know, um, I read a thing on a mission, uh, missionaries that were going to New Guinea, uh, to the cannibalistic tribe. They would literally run into camp, grab this guy by his hair, pull him back, slit open his stomach, pull out the entrails, and start eating on him before he's ever dead. Was that graphic enough for you? And people, some of y'all are probably thinking, what primitive savages? What primitive sick people? Right? But you know, they're not primitive. They're not, they're not primitive savages because their ancestor, they have an ancestor named Noah. Come on. Did you all catch this? They have an ancestor named Noah. It all came from there, folks. So at some point, somewhere in the history of this cannibalistic tribe, they turned their backs on the truth. Are y'all getting this? Now, I know somebody's sitting here and you're thinking, so I'm, and I ain't Jesus. <laughs> okay, so, but you're thinking, you're going to be, wow, he doesn't. And you're going, but what about, you know, after all this time, those people that have never, ever been told, that ain't fair. And I'll tell you now, God doesn't work in fair. God is the living truth, and he already said from the beginning, you turn your back on me, it can be from generation to generation to generation to generation. So, we can take it upon ourselves to go and tell them. And that's great. If God's called you to go, go. But don't think that they haven't already had their chance. Amen? Amen? What happened to those natives in, 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 uh, somewhere in history, as in Romans chapter 1 that we read, is they turned their backs and they were turned over by God to foolish and perverse thinking and degenerated. Now I ask you, Where's our country at? The cannibalistic tribe would open up, pull out, eat, while we cut up little ones, over one and a half million every year. We cut up little ones and suck out the pieces legally. How close are we to being primitive savages? And it's promoted by the current administration, and their political party. That, that itself is sick. It's scary. And you know what? If you're not on your knees praying for a revival, you're wrong. If you're, if you're throwing stuff out there that's just as bad and hatred, then you're wrong. You should, we do our fighting on our knees, and we need to be on our knees praying for every, every individual that is not of God that's not pro-life that's that's pro-homosexual agenda and pro-choice we should be praying for them and claiming that God's going to move them and draw them in and pray for a revival because man that's what's got to happen it's not going to happen with us saying things bad about them that don't make us any better than them all our praying has it has to be done fervently on our knees claiming and believing that God's going to intervene that's the only way it's going to happen folks Every day I see something because I don't watch any of the news on TV. I get I get these things on my smartphone or I wouldn't have known about Indianapolis because I don't watch the news. But I see these sad, sad things and I see what Biden and Kamala are doing. And and and, I, and when I see all this stuff that's anti-Christ. Somebody said today they're anti-American. I don't care about it. You know what? It's God, man. God's first and foremost. They're anti-Christ. Now, I bleed red, white, and blue, and I got a lot of people that are no longer here that, that gave me the freedom to, to be up here and talk like I am right now. But I, I am more God than I am America, okay? And they're anti-Christ. We have to pray for them to get saved because if they do, our country 
will turn itself back to God. And we'll, as a people, we will cry out and he'll hear us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you again for a short and powerful message, Lord, about the lie that's being fed to our children. And Lord, I'm praying and believing and, I, and I'm asking that everybody's in agreement that the next generation is not going to be taught this as a fact. There's going to be a revival starting now in this country to where we turn it back over to you. People that are not God-fearing. Lord, I, I'm not praying that in a few years more God-fearing are put in place. Lord, I'm praying for salvations. I'm praying that Joe Biden gets saved. I'm praying Kamala Harris gets saved. I'm praying that the whole White House gets saved. There's a revival and people are speaking in tongues, falling prostrate, and don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> and they get back up and say, hey, we can't kill babies anymore. God, I know you can do that in the blink of an eye. So I'm praying for more warriors to be in agreement, to continue to pray, believing, and standing on that. But you start the revival now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen.